screw chillers when they came into the market really pushed a lot of boundaries for efficiency but they, they really in my assessment they did a lot to push the industry forward in what we're capable of doing and bringing much more complex systems into the market in order to achieve more we just we're able to just do more with it and that's really where they shine and it, it's up to us as the technician to get our head around these and understand these advanced mechanical principles and provide the customer or a a a really good service and expertise and that's part of where like this is where we justify ourselves this is where as a technician you begin to separate yourself because you have the ability to analyze these complex systems that have a lot happening there is a lot happening in this process not only from a mechanical standpoint even though it seems quite simple once you're used to it uh, i shouldn't say that it seems simple. I can say it seems simple to me now because I've spent a lot of years dealing with this stuff. You know, saying it's simple from a I haven't seen this before and this doesn't make sense. Like this is a radically different technology to me. Uh, I, I get the point of, um, yeah, it's a bit absurd to say that that's simple. So apologies there. But these are there's a lot happening not only mechanically but also from a control side so that's part of where when these systems came in we started having controls packages that matched the complexity of the of the compressor it, it takes a very complicated control system to to control one of these not only being able to monitor just our basic temperatures and exv control stuff like that but now having to control based off of um, current load and stuff that was technology that was levels of control that only existed in centrifugals that wasn't things that were actively implemented on an air cooled lower end side which that's what that's what a screw is you know screws are they're not to the centrifugals level in complexity in in efficiency like they're not competing with an with a centrifugal they, they don't but they brought a lot of advanced theories that are parallel to a lot of things in the centrifugal world into a more base level market. It's up to us to, to rise to that challenge. You know, this is what the industry calls for. We don't get to choose what technology gets used. We don't get to choose the equipment. We don't get to choose any of these things. So it doesn't matter whether we truly like it or not. Like I complain about different stuff all the time. It really doesn't matter. What matters is this is what the industry has chosen. This is what the consumer, the customer, is being sold in their plant and they're wanting to use. And we, it is our challenge to educate ourselves and to grow ourselves in order to keep up in the process. And, you know, it goes back to the, to the days where, you know, beer can cold was an acceptable charging practice or a two smokes um uh vacuum just sorry it makes me good i i know i've i grew up with these guys right so it makes me chuckle because when i start talking about this stuff i think about them you know it's just it, it really it really is how they were uh it was quite quite literally sit on the roof give it 30 minutes to an hour it's enough time to get a couple of cigarettes in and have some chats <laughs> and just talk and then cut cut the uh, cut the pump and start running. A lot has changed in the industry, and uh, there's, for good reason. W whether we always agree with it or not is, is irrelevant. It's it happens because even with say like EXVs, that required a level of electronics or ECM motors. Either one of those that required an understanding of electronic systems and components. They just a lot of people weren't willing to touch and a lot of people have had to retire and just leave the industry because they weren't willing to put the work in. Granted, you know, they'd already put the work in to learn what they had learned. So it's not a negative bash towards them. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. Efficiency was a big, big part of this. Uh, these compressors are loud and I highly recommend even though I don't, I didn't practice it. I'll, I'll, I'll confess to that. I recommend 
being very cautious with your hearing around these systems when you start get, I mean, you should, uh, in general, anyway, when you get into scrolls and centrifugals, those two, I'm sorry, not scrolls, uh, screws, screws and centrifugals, these machines, now centrifugals aren't near as loud comparatively to a screw, but centrifugals can get very loud, very loud, and they're almost always in an enclosed space where everything echoes really badly. I mean, if you're working on an RTHD and not, we're using hearing protection, which I've done, I've done. I'm guilty of this. Uh, there's a reason, you know, tinnitus. Uh, I, think, I think that's the right term. You get the ringing in the ears. That's, 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 we deal with that. Okay. I deal with that. And um, that's a consequence I'll just have to live with because I, I'm stubborn. Okay. I just never took that stuff seriously. I would suggest that you do. Uh, these have very complex, not only is, so not only is it a complex controls and mechanical, but we have a lot happening in the oil side. And our oil side is just as much of an active component that we have to monitor and control as the refrigerant itself. So when we're already in a state where it can be a lot, to, a lot of information to process from the refrigerant level, then now we've got to add all of the oil management process to that whole system like it, it's a lot to get your head around so and that's really where it is good if you can like if you can get an extremely strong refrigerant theory uh principles underneath you and like you're solid there and that was something that i i'd say helped me a lot early on is just refrigeration theory makes a lot of sense to me and I really enjoy the concept of it. it. It speaks to what I like and it's very, it's just a fun theory for me. I like refrigeration, period, just as a, as a theory and as a concept in, in the physics world or physics, maybe that's a chemical world. Either way, I'm splitting hairs. So when it did get time for these more advanced systems, it was easier because I had put the work in by then to really understand the ins and outs of what was happening on the refrigerant side. So I wasn't, I was having to spend less time trying to make sure that my theory was right in my head on refrigerant and then managing these oil parameters now. That was a major uh, benefit that I had. That, but I had I had to put the work in to get to that point. I didn't. It doesn't just automatically click for me. I didn't just automatically get it out day one. I put a lot of years and late nights into studying refrigeration principles and systems and schematics and challenging myself with all kinds of scenarios, uh, and and then trying to go out in the field every day and apply that to systems I was putting my hands on. To just, to just understand. That's what a lot of this comes down to. Uh, we struggle with systems mostly because we lack understanding. We lack education. Anyway, I'm getting off on another uh, preach. The big things to focus on here, advanced control theory. Get your head around that. The addition of the oil system and the basic mechanical functions of a screw. And what makes them turn and you know, from a controls and mechanical sp perspective, where those kind of combine, uh, is something like the current, where 100% RLA doesn't mean you're moving the max CFM that can push through that compressor. That it's, it's total volume output that is capable of. Um, that those those are not directly correlated. You could be running you know, 50, 75% of the CFM the compressor can move, but in the right conditions, you may still be at 100% RLA. That's one of the, con I know for me, it took a while. For a lot of people I've worked with, it takes, like that's, that's a tricky thing. In addition to just understanding the oil and the general staging, that's a tricky thing. Uh, so I would suggest take some time to just build understanding around that as much as you can and it will help it will help long term 